Well, let's return now to our top story, the possible meeting between US President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Leonid Petrov is a North Korea analyst from the Australian National University, and he joins us now from Sydney. Thank you so much for joining us. Firstly, what do you believe is behind this uh, warming of relations? We've seen uh, we've seen it begin really uh, in earnest during the Winter Olympics in South Korea and it's continued this week with a high profile delegation from the South to the North. What do you be believe is behind this detente? I think the role of uh, South Korean President Moon Jae-in is absolutely instrumental in uh, bringing together the uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and uh, President uh, Trump uh, together for, for the summit. We don't know where and when this is going to happen, but it's shaping well already. And although the White House um, just mentioned that uh, it's just going to be a meeting, but not negotiations, I think it's, it is good enough because basically the uh, both sides are quite desperate. Uh, uh, North Koreans are cornered with the international economic sanctions. Uh, even China and Russia turned away from Pyongyang by uh, joining the multilateral sanctions uh, sponsored by the United Nations Security Council. So North Koreans uh, really need um, the endorsement of the United States to lift the sanctions. For that, they can exchange uh, their nuclear and missile programs. That's what Kim Jong-un said. And Donald Trump is also pretty besieged right now by the uh, allegations of the Russian involvement in uh, his uh, election campaign, um, the investigations, and also his um, State Department is uh, hemorrhaging good expertise in many directions. And we see that even the Korean experts have been leaving, um, have been leaving his team. Uh, Joseph Yoon uh, stepped down last week. Uh, Victor Cha, who was nominated to, for the uh, position of uh, U.S. ambassador to South Korea, was not appointed. So it looks like uh, Donald Trump is trying to solidify his career uh, policy, and um, he's trying to do it much more uh, aggressively than his predecessors, uh, uh, Barack Obama and uh, George W. Bush. So he's trying to step in and um, just very quickly achieve some kind of um, immediate diplomatic coup, immediate, very instant uh, diplomatic victory, and uh, who else but meeting with Kim Jong-un uh, could have provided um, him with this opportunity. So I think um, now the negotiations are going to start about the venue, and uh, I think China would be a perfect uh, place for such uh, sensational and historic meeting. Yes, and the ultimate aim of these talks is for a complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, at least from uh, the United States and South Korean side. But we've seen North Korea conduct uh, six tests in quick succession, really, in recent times. Why should we believe that North Korea is committed to the same goal? Well, North Korea needs nuclear weapons to uh, defend uh, the, its own regime, the integrity of its borders. Kim Jong-un always said that um, nuclear weapons uh, is, uh, is a psychological deterrent for potential, against potential invasion or regime change. Um, and unification by force. So I don't think that North Korea really needs nuclear weapons if there is some either um, credible uh, assurance, security assurance given to North Korea, or even better, if there is a peace regime on the Korean Peninsula, because the Korean War, which started uh, some 70 years ago, um, actually hasn't been finished properly, and North Koreans live in constant fear of the resumption of war, and South Koreans also very concerned about this possibility, particularly with the nuclear uh, experimentations and rocket uh, tests of North Korea. But should uh, North Korea be given the um, uh, security assurance, and only the United States can give this assurance, then I don't think that Kim Jong-un would need nuclear uh, bombs and, uh, and intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, if peace uh, regime prevails, um, North Korea would be much more interested in uh, economic cooperation with South Korea, with its neighbors uh, across the Pacific, and I think that's what Kim Jong-un was trying to achieve. Nobody listened to North Korea for many decades. Uh, North Korea wanted to negotiate with the United States since 1974, 
and uh, well it never happened um, one administration after another simply uh, refused to talk to North Korea and only South Koreans periodically uh, resumed this inter-Korean uh, reconciliation process yes. it was uh, like that some 10 years ago but unfortunately it was interrupted so now we see the new dawn of inter-Korean cooperation which can be translated into the uh, regional peace and prosperity and Donald Trump's and Kim Jong-un's summit for that okay. is going to be conducive Okay, uh, Leonid Petrov, uh, thank you for your insight.